All right, today we are going to have some fun. We are going to look at a case study that I actually put together this morning. Uh, and this was for an actual individual who had reached out to us on YouTube. Thank you so much for the comments. Always appreciate the support. Thank you very much as we continue to grow and educate as many people as possible on everything, anything, cash value life insurance. So this was an individual who had initially reached out on YouTube in respect to cash value collateral loans, wanted information on different lenders. So we sent him a, li a list of lenders available with contact information, their rates, minimums, all that good stuff. Um, but then he reached out via email and he actually included some additional information. He said, I'm, this is the state I live in. I'm 35 years old right now. I'd like to be able to pay in $60,000 per year with a minimum premium though. I don't want to get billed or be committed to 60,000. He didn't say that, but anytime I see minimum premium, how I view that is minimum commitment. I'd like to really be able to max fund this thing but if life happens, I don't want to be on the hook for this big amount. So a lot of people like minimum premiums, that 1090 split for that sole reason. Point of interest, some things he mentioned here. So maximize IRR. He actually took it a step further and this was a good indicator to know he's been doing his research and this is why I responded and put these scenarios together as well, is he said, what company has delivered the strongest actual internal rate of return? Not just the illustrated IRR, but actual proof of performance. I'm like, that is a good question that I remember back in the day from corporations, the big players, what they always ask. I like that question. So <laughs> he asked maximum IRR, or that's what he wanted, actual policy performance. My response to that was this. Great question. When it comes to the internal rate of return, if a policy is designed properly for maximum cash value and with one of the four major mutual companies, Mass, Guardian, New York Life, or Northwestern Mutual, we've seen them always go back and forth with each other. Regardless of what's illustrated, you could close your eyes and pick one of them out of a hat. You can't go wrong with either of those carriers. So company selection though, Mass and Guardian he wanted, that does provide additional flexibility. Now, as you look at these questions, on the right, what do we see here? How long should I fund? He didn't ask that question. But this question often comes up. Now, I like to, well, people ask this question frequently, how long should I pay into the policy, Steve? Like, what makes the most sense? And really, the answer to that question is, how long do you want to fund into the policy? Some people want to pay into it forever, some don't. But if you want to get a, a technical answer to that, because I, I like to give some more just transparency here, how long should you fund? What makes the most sense? I'll give you a quick example. If you want the maximum internal rate of return, funding a policy for seven years or less, could even be 10 years or less, will often maximize the internal rate of return on the specific dollar amount you are getting into a policy in that period of time. And sometimes the strongest IRR will be over four or five years. This depends on our age, dollar amount, our health, a number of factors. Looking at the guarantees and non-guarantees, what is interesting, but policy design has a huge impact on that. But that short pay is if I'm really interested in maximizing the internal rate of return. Maybe I max fund it for seven, maybe it's 10 years. Then after that, I just pay the minimum in or a reduced amount. I can still capture a strong IRR that way. But maybe I say, well, I wanna be able to pay into it for a long period of time. I'm 35 now, I wanna pay into it up until retirement at age 65, and then I'll start taking income from it. So that's 30 years that I wanna pay in. And I want a low premium, the ability to pump in 60K per year. So I want a lot in that respect if I want to be able to pay into it for a long period of time. So what I always like to ask in our entire company, all of our agents ask this, is really how long do you want to fund? How long do you want to make payments into the policy? And the answers we receive, and this hopefully provides some, some guidance here, is I know what I want. I want to pay into it for 10 years. After 10 years, I plan to kind of take my foot off the gas at my company. Yeah, I might add some, but I want to enjoy my money. I do not want to pay anything by the time I hit this age 
this number of years, like some people know exactly what they want. So we want to listen to that and design the policy accordingly, but also design it where you can pivot if needed, because life does happen for better, for better and for worse. And then B, we get unsure. I'd like to see options. So I don't know how long I want to pay into it. Can I see some options of what it looks like if I pay into it for a long period of time, a short period of time? So here's where we're going to have some fun on this one. So he wanted to see, in respect to companies, who did he want to see? Mass. And then Guardian. Looking at those two, two of my personal favorites, Mass and Guardian. If you want to fund for a long period of time, say it's 30 years, we're going to look at that. These guys will accommodate that beautifully, where you can still carry a design where you have perhaps a 1090 split, which will capture or, or give you the benefits of strong early cash value and strong long-term cash value because you can keep on pumping into it. Very attractive. The disadvantage to some, not to everyone, depending on your situation, is their flexibility feature. So actually, if we look at Mass Mutual's flexibility, they have improved their product, but for it to really work, where there's a lot of convenience and no two or three year window, which is what their Ailer riders have, one time per year, every year on our anniversary date, we can adjust payments without any medical underwriting. Their Lister rider is critical for that. But just some, for some additional information there, if he wants to pay in for a long period of time, Mass is going to accommodate that. If he says, hey, I'd like to be able to just slug cash into this thing for perhaps 10 years and then I'm done, or maybe I'll just pay the premium thereafter, Guardian's going to look good. Guaranteed, non-guaranteed, internal rate of return, ton of PUA flexibility as well, where you can pay just the base, base in the term rider. And then at discretion, you can just add PUAs on an unscheduled basis. Very flexible. If that's what he's attracted to, that's where Guardian could be, could be a good option. So if he falls in option B, or if you're in a situation similar to this, following an option, following, falling in option B, what would you want to see? Well, again, if I'm you, what would I want to see just with the knowledge I have in the business? So let's take a look here. What we put together, a couple options. You're gonna see two tabs on the left, bottom left-hand corner, Guardian, and then Mass. Solid options. You can't, again, can close your eyes and pick one of them out of a hat. You cannot go wrong with either one of these companies. Two of the four major mutuals have always delivered. We use both. So, with the Guardian option, wanted to show some variety because this is kind of step one as we look at the different options. 35 years old, we ran it at second best class, class, regular preferred, Guardian product, quick sample. We've got the 60K for five years. I love showing the five pay. The reason why is it immediately eliminates that conception of, oh, I have to pay into a whole life insurance policy for my whole life. A lot of times people think that. I know my dad <laughs> kind of had that, that perception. I don't want to have to pay into this thing for my whole life. I'm not attracted to that. After 10 years, he finally saw, oh, I don't have to do that? All right, I'm interested. Um, but anyway, <laughs> to get back on track, this shows one, okay, I can stop after five years. Guaranteed values. So you see we are still running things pre-7702 while we still have the chance. Breaking even between years five and six on the guarantees. Now he's young, so that's definitely gonna play in his favor, but that looks good. Again, short pay, guarantees, annualized internal rate of return, there we go. Present dividend values, and then also that indexed feature over time. There you go, side by side, exactly what it looks like. Now, as part of our process, this is what we're going to show for simplicity, so we can see guaranteed values, present dividend, and then if I want to attach that indexed rider, here's what it looks like, but I don't have to attach it. Okay, that's great. But, 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 we must also be transparent. So here is the detailed illustration, which we pulled the values from. So first question, Mr. Client or Mr. Individual, 
when you have $60,000 going into the policy, one thing that you had mentioned was you want flexibility, minimum premium. So when money goes into a policy, where can it go? Policy design. I know I talk about this all the time. Premium, check this out. There's your $6,000 premium or your PUA rider. There you go, $54,000. Now, the premium piece, there you go, $422,000. If we stopped there, the MEC limit would be just about 11 to 12K. He's paying in 60K. So how we equip this policy where it could carry a low premium, which reduces the initial insurance expenses, is we attached this guy, target additional benefit, which is a term insurance rider of almost $1.6 million. Here's the initial cost, $511,000, and this does decrease as the years pass. I'll touch on that briefly in the next illustration. But there's the term rider, there's the term cost, and then as we look at the values here, net cash value and net death benefit, this is net of the base premium, term rider cost, and net values at the end of the day, exactly what we saw in the illustration. So I'll direct your attention first, or if I may direct your attention first to the option on the left, guaranteed values matches the Excel spreadsheet, current values based on their current dividend rate, of 5.65%, and then the intermediate assumes a rate in between the two, so that'd be what, 4.825 in this example? So it's good to, to look at, it's conservative, but we don't, have, we don't have to. So there's your current values, okay? So this is a means of validating the Excel workbook. We should never, if you're in the business, never just send a, an Excel workbook to someone. You've got, from a, from a compliance standpoint, we talk about this a lot in our coaching and training business, from a compliance standpoint, that's a big no-no. Always provide the compliant material. I like the spreadsheets because it simplifies things because this is a lot of info. This is the dividend sheet with a breakdown. So there's your term rider. Because it's a five pay, we cut it after year seven. What we also showed here, come on, here we go. Average internal rate of return, right? Because sometimes people will ask, um, I started hearing this, recently, actually from a, my friend Denzel, um, that some people are asking about the internal rates of return. We had a joint call with someone on that, um, an event we had asked, hey, where are you getting the IRRs on your spreadsheets from? So for full transparency, where we get them from is directly from the illustration software on the PDF illustration. Like we pull all the info directly from that, just because that's how it should be in my opinion. I don't like trying to create our own stuff. You put there's too much risk of human error there. And then we've got the same thing with the indexed feature illustrated, which that you can switch back and forth over time. So it's not one or the other. So going back to the Excel spreadsheet, here we go. That is your five pay. So one option for him to see, because we haven't discussed how long he wants to pay into it yet. Maybe he doesn't know, maybe he does. Again, I only put this together quick because he asked a question I really liked. <laughs> you can tell you got to be a true nerd to, to do that kind of stuff <laughs> where I would advise myself, don't do that. You got too much, too many things going on. But then I also wanted to illustrate what it looks like if he continues to pay into it. Because once you show one option with a five pay, I cannot just say or state, well, with mass, you can go longer. Only because this is my OCD creeping in my mind if... Someone said that to me, my immediate response would be, can I see it? I'd like to understand that better. It's okay if it takes some time, like with the understanding, it can be a lot of work to put together, but I would like to see it. I, I want to best understand, I want to understand this stuff to the best of my ability if I'm a consumer. So what's interesting about this, mass mutual options, look at this. We can show another option for 50 years if we wanted to. That would take them until 85. Not too many people want to fund that long. But here we go. Funding for five years. There we go. 301, 401. What do you notice about the 15-year fund? 
by year five. It's identical. 30-year fund, same thing. What is valuable about this, this is the same product with the same design from day one. He would not have to choose if he's planning on funding it for five, 15, or 30. He can fund it for 12 years or 22 years if he wanted to. Could be 42 years. Can keep on going up until age 100. But we deliberately designed it with that additional flexibility where he doesn't have to select anything up front. With Guardian, it's best, it's, it is better just to maximize that product's potential or that performance if we have an idea in respect to how long we want to pay into it. So typically people that are very intentional about what they want to do will typically gravitate to our Guardian, sometimes mass, with this kind of option. But this guy, so if this is me and I see this side by side, okay, this looks great because I see the policy over time, option on the right, all 1090 splits by the way, you can tell with the early cash value, but the only difference now, far right, that 30 year fund, you keep on pumping money into it because you can and we can go beyond that point, of time, point in time. So if we want to validate all this quick, here's what we would do, which we provided all to him. Here's the five-year fund. $60,000 per year. There's your premium. 10%. There's your cash. 301401. Death benefit, $2 million, $2 million, $2 million in change. You can tell it's Getting late on a Friday. Mech limit, a little overinflated, not at a flat $60,000. The main reason why is if I'm going to pump money into it potentially for 30 years or a bit longer, I like to build in a little bit of space there. You don't always have to when you run the actual mech test with long term funding, but it is good to do that. So here we've got a reduced paid up, but let's just go back to this. So year five. 301, and then here, what do you got? The $6,000 base premium. Okay. Now, progressing on to the next guy. 15-year fund. Check this out. Same base premium. Same first-year cash value. Same break-even year five, 301, 401. If you want to re rewind the video a bit, you'll see the Excel spreadsheet match these values. Only difference here, stopping the funding at age 50, 1.182. It's a, the same exact policy we're going to continue to fund. No MEC, then reduced paid up, and then same thing with a 30-year fund. There we go. And if you're in the business and you really want to know the ins and outs, I'm giving you a little bit of this with the values up there. Um, feel free to reach out to us. We've got a coaching and training business. We don't take any commission splits with that. It is set up as a more of a subscription service, but everyone subscribed. We've seen their businesses flourish. Um, one individual just recently, he designed a beautiful policy with an individual wanting to pay in six figures per year. He surpassed um, with that one case that the um, with a particular insurance company he wrote, the average broker production for, with one in one year, he surpassed with one case <laughs> the entire annual production. And it was really because now he's got the knowledge where he can do things on his own, designing policies, knows how to stress test for a mech, making, making it very flexible, having the awareness, being able to answer questions, all of that important stuff. He's got that ability now because of the training, reaching out when he has questions. We've got mastermind calls. That's my little pitch there. Um, but it goes beyond just knowing the basics of an illustration. So that is the purpose of our coaching and training business. But anyway, we've got the same thing now with a 30-year fund. It just keeps on growing over time. Same mech limit from day one. So my point here is this is something that we wanted to show him, or I wanted to show him, <laughs> and that's partly why I'm still here at 8 p.m. on a Friday recording stuff, just because um, I spent time on this this morning instead of other tasks. But anyway, that's because I love this stuff. So anyway, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. I do hope that you found um, this video valuable. Um, hit the like button. 
Subscribe for more, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.